Kadir Pavani, and I'm a sophomore at Independence High School in Virginia. In my free time, I'd like to do like play sports with my friends, but like just play out, play video games and stuff like that. So, so my research question was about how like generative AI and just in generally AI can be utilized in cybersecurity, either to defend, to like to strengthen an existing cybersecurity system, and how it can also be used to like say attack a system. Say like a phishing attack. Uh, yeah. So when I was looking through a lot of these results, I kind of um, I was looking through specifically uh a lot of websites. So AI and cybersecurity is something that's also already prevalent to an extent. So I was looking at like products that people have, that organizations have put on the web for commercial use. And that was a big part of where I like learned about how how it could be used to defend a system and why it's better than just a normal cybersecurity system. Um, yeah. Uh, and some of the results I found from this were uh, that I learned that AI has a wide variety of applications for malicious software, like say phishing attacks, because I think most of us can agree that when like ch say something like ChatGPT would create like a text or something, it'd be very hard to differentiate that from an actual human. Uh, and yeah. So this is a list of all the sources. A lot of these were just like product sources, as I mentioned, and some of them were articles and stuff from like that the uh, governments have posted. Uh, in my conclu in conclusion, generate AI is definitely a multifaceted tool in the context of cybersecurity. A uh, big part of generative AI is LLM, which are large language models. Large language mo models require large amounts of data to grow and change into what application they are needed for. This means that if data is wrong or data which is not controlled correctly when inputted into LLMs can cause undesired results. So in that context, uh, one example is when ChatGPT acts like was tricked into giving out uh, instructions for how to make a bomb, which is obviously dangerous as you can imagine. So my research experience. So I want to thank my professor, uh, Sarada Prasad, as well as Vir Virgil. I'm sorry, I do not know how to say the last name. Um, but I was able to learn a lot about how to write a research paper from my writing professor. And from my uh, act from my research professor, I was able to learn a lot more about cybersecurity than I think I would, be, I would have been able to learn on my, by myself. And it was also like a really good introduction and like, it really helped me learn a lot about cybersecurity and more than I probably would have been able to learn them by myself. Uh, yeah. And thank you for listening. Excellent, Kadir. Excellent. You want to stop sharing? Oh. Yeah, so that you can come. Great. Great job. Uh, Dr. Prasad, a question for Kadir, please. Uh, thanks, Kadir. It was a wonderful presentation. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding the use of AI, that AI could be uh, seen as very uh, pervasive. So yeah. uh, do you think uh, we need to be concerned about uh, use of AI in each and every aspect of our day-to-day -day life? Uh, so one thing about AI, especially large language models like ChatGPT or like Bing, they are, most of them, or you can probably turn this off in settings, but they use your data to help them grow. So if you don't want your data specifically to be like for the available for people on the internet to use, you want to like probably turn that setting off as well as that, like there's certain models of ChatGPT and stuff, which you can find online, which will not like use your data to grow and are set models. But besides that, Keeping your data safe with like generate AI is mostly about what you give to the um actual like large language models and what you can do to protect your data against like LLMs. Well, thank you, thank you for your uh, response, and I wish you all the best. 
Thanks Thank a lot. You. Excellent job, Kadir. <laughs> Thank you.